talk a little LSU Auburn as uh, LSU preparing to hit the road, uh, head over to Jordan Hare to take on an Auburn team that's in a bad way right now, Jake. And it's interesting. Line opened LSU minus seven and a half immediately got bet up to nine. Great sign for the LSU Tigers. I think it's maybe back to like eight and a half at this point. But um, I didn't get to watch as much Auburn film as I wanted yesterday. Um, only got to spend a few minutes on it today. I hope to do uh, more. Not I hope to do. I will before um, tonight to have a, a deeper dive on it. But just watching uh, some of that Auburn-Missouri game back, Jake, it's it's just not good in the plains right now. You want to talk about being one-dimensional? Auburn ran the ball 17 times to start the game on Saturday. Before finally they hit a pass on third and six, which was nice in the red zone. Uh, you know, good, good on them uh, after those 17 runs in a row. But like when I think about the game plans that Matt House has put together, really since the second half of Florida State on, and then I think about, you know, okay, if, if I'm a defensive coordinator and I'm looking at a team, what sort of problem do they present? How are they going to stress me? And I see an Auburn team that literally is the definition of a one-dimensional football team, and I start to salivate a bit with what Matt House can do. And especially if you want to run the ball, where I love LSU's defensive backs and run support. Even, look, think about the Florida State game, boys, right? What was the big worry going into the game? Wasn't Jordan Travis? It was Florida State's running backs. Yeah. Auburn shut him, or excuse me, LSU shut him down. Um, obviously, it's Mississippi State. They probably run the ball more than you actually think they do. LSU shut that down as well. And so now you're going to tell me I get a healthy, rested B.J. Ojolari back. I get Harold Perkins who just, you give him an assignment and watch him thrive. And his, his assignment doesn't even have to be coverage. It's just chasing down the running back. Like, I think this defense is set for a very big day. And Auburn's offensive line isn't any good. No, they're not. If you want to go see exactly the true story of their offensive line, go watch the Penn State game. You can also watch the Mizzou game. Because in the first two games, they played Mercer in San Jose State. And you watch that tape, you're like, okay, this is a pretty decent offensive line. Well, I mean, Penn State embarrassed them. Penn State was so much more physical at the point than that offensive line was. Auburn graded out at 39% pass protection. 39 is a unit. Like a bad day is in the 50s. They were 39% against Penn State. Missouri, they were 60%. So it really wasn't great against Mizzou either. And Mizzou doesn't really have a game-changing edge defender. It's an offensive line that is struggling in pass protection. It's also struggling in run blocking. Like the yards that Tank Bixby has gotten this year, a lot of it has been he's made the first guy miss and he's gotten to the second level. So you have a clear advantage on your defensive front. And that's look, that's why B.J. Ojolari doesn't play last week. He's got a little bit of something. The coach is like, uh, you're not playing. We're saving you for that SEC road yeah. game, and he is going to feast on this offensive line. I want to see kind of where Harold Perkins lines up because, T, you did a good job of explaining. In the game against Mississippi State, he was in the A-gap. He was as an edge. In this game yeah. against New Mexico, he was kind of in the slot a little bit. He a was a little bit wider. Slot. Very confusing. What, yeah. is, what, is that, what, what do you call that position now, Jake? Because, I mean – and like a traditional 4-3 setup, it would have been like a Sam linebacker role. Nickel but it Sam. Felt more like an, okay, I was about to say, it felt more like a nickel back. Yeah, yeah. So yeah like we used to call that, Sam. Okay. We called it a nickel Sam because just of, of the, you know, the nature of the player, and he's not a nickel, he's not a Sam because he's walked out there. And so it's just like I, I normally when I think freshman, I think I don't want him in space, right? I, right. I want him in the phone. I want him to just be able to take – like the fact that they are comfortable – having him in a somewhat coverage role at times, not only shows, not, not like Brian Kelly said, Matt House is giving him vertical slices of the playbook, as a good coach does with a young player, so he knows what to do. But the fact that the, the vertical slices have him out there in that space operating, Jake, I think is very impressive for a young linebacker. Yeah, and, and hopefully we can get that tape put together. I forgot to send Danny those clips. We'll do it during one of the breaks of just how smart of a football player Harold Perkins has been so far in this year. So, like, a matchup like this, I'm intrigued. Where do you go? Do you go with what he did against Mississippi State, what he did against New Mexico? And the Auburn offensive staff, they're wondering the same thing. Yeah. Like, that's yeah. the good part about it. Where is this guy going to line up? Because he is a true problem. And if I'm LSU, and look, Matt House, the last two weeks, I mean, tipping my cap to you, the game plans you put together, I mean, it's been a really nice plan. The players have executed 
the plan. But if I'm Matt House this week, it's like, okay, if you beat me, it's going to be through the air. You're <laughs> not beating me on the ground. Listen to the pass offense reports from Auburn this year. Against Mercer, 64.4% in the passing game. Against San Jose State, 54.2%. This is a grade. Against Penn State, 46.8. Against Missouri, 379 as an overall, so it takes quarterback, receivers, offensive line, passing charts, all of that into account, and it grades it. You're getting worse. You're not improving. You're actually getting worse. And the game against Missouri, that felt like one of the worst offensive game plans I've ever seen. Yeah. And I've watched a lot of Iowa this year, if that tells you how bad that was. It lines up with the uh, Iowa Hawkeyes. Well, it's funny. It's funny. I think uh, Emil McClellan uh, hosted the LSU football podcast. Great job. You should check out. Mentioned in the chat, but um, Auburn started the game. I uh, might have been lost the time actually, but they started the game kind of solid, right? They had the big fourteen play uh, touchdown drive. Then they get a turnover, short field. They managed to make it fourteen nothing, and after that, it was just completely fell apart. Just punt, 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 punt. Uh, yeah, and, and okay, so Champ is in the chat saying, uh, uh, LSU didn't shut down Mississippi State's run. They averaged like six yards a carry. They just went away from it. Uh, Mississippi State had 75 rush yards. Mississippi State had how many fourth and short turnovers in that game where they could not convert on the ground? Um, I want to say I read a tweet from Julie Boudouin this morning that has Makai Wingo, excuse me, Makai, yeah, Wingo, yeah. as the top-rated interior defensive lineman in uh, the SEC right now, according to Pro Football Focus. So, uh, no, you're wrong. Okay, well, yeah, in, in a game like so that. So, you're, you're taking a single stat. You're taking a, a, a rush yard stat, a rush per carry, which I get does matter on the macro level. But in the micro of that game, it meant nothing. You had 75 total rush yards, and you could not, Mississippi State, I'm talking about, could not convert on third and short and fourth and short. Okay? That is shutting them down. And then if they have to go away from the run because they're losing – that's because you did your job, okay? And so, yeah, I'm not intimidated, like Jake said, by an Auburn attack that is so one-dimensional, so non-threatening. Outside of Tanks Bigsby, there's just not a lot of raw talent on this squad right now. And you also, you mentioned it earlier, T, you get like Fouché back, and that's somebody that is a big safety. He, he looks like a linebacker. And so him yes. in this game is going to be key because you're going to be missing major burns, but you get someone – who has four years of experience in the SEC, and he's had a ton of starts. And so even though he hasn't played a game this year, he's been on the scout team, he's been running with the ones, kind of working himself in. I'm excited to kind of see what the plan for him is going to be in this game. You get Jay Ward back as well. That's and again, say. let's go. Dude. Like, okay, so Matt House, okay, against Mississippi State, you move Jay Ward from safety to nickel, and he's like the SEC player of the week, yeah. right? Okay, but with Matt House, he's shown you with Harold Perkins. Maybe it's not nickel this week. Yeah. Maybe it's something else. It's Maybe fair. he puts him at a safety position and he can interchange where he wants it based on who he's playing. If he's going to do it with a freshman in Harold Perkins, he'll certainly do it with a senior in Jay Ward. And yeah. so I like that. I like the fact that you're going to you know, place the personnel on your defense based off what the offense can do if your guys can handle it. And they've shown they can handle it so far. Uh, I am so excited for the Jay Ward return. I mean, one of the best parts of this defense right now is how hyper-aggressive the DBs are in run defense. Go watch that, Mr. Sagan. Jay Ward and Greg Brooks lay the wood. Uh, Makai Gardner had a couple nice plays last week setting the edge. Even Seven Banks got involved, which, you know, it's New Mexico, so whatever. But the point is, if a team wants to run the ball and you need to stop them um, and you want to stop big explosive runs, uh, great tackling out of your DBs is one of the keys to accomplishing that, and LSU seems to have that. I mean, I'm not going to lie, dude. I am feeling pretty fantastic about this matchup on Saturday. And, I mean, just look at – and then look at the other side of the ball. We've talked a lot about LSU's defense. LSU's offense has gotten better and better and better. And Jaden Daniels is multiple orders of magnitude better than what the other team is bringing to bear. I don't care who the quarterback is. Whichever one of the three guys that they want to play, Ashford, if TJ Finley's back, and then who's that number 12 that starts to work into the game? So that's game, the, uh, I think he might be a freshman or something. Either way, no matter who they play, they can't hold Jaden Daniels' holding, jock. Holding Griner is the, uh, the third guy. Yeah, well, he ain't holding his jock, okay? Jaden Daniels, just like I said, head and shoulders better and only getting better week to week. So if I'm LSU... 
Now, look, the team does have to be worried, I think, Jake, about maybe starting to fall a little too in love with themselves after good play, but nothing like overly impressive, right, opponent-wise or anything. But if they stay focused and if they enter this game with the right mindset and commitment, like, this is a statement game for them. They mm-hmm. can clearly smash Auburn and show, uh, no, we are a team on the rise, moving in the right direction. And uh, even though everybody may have counted us out early on, uh, we may be a factor in this SEC race yet. And I don't mean like winning the SEC, but I mean in terms of like affecting it, right? Knocking off somebody who's maybe in lines or maybe getting a bit frisky, entering the third best yeah. team in the SEC situation. Like the opportunity to take a step towards that come Saturday. I think you're exactly right. And also, like we talk about, okay, are you reading your press clippings? Are you starting to feel yourself maybe a little bit too much? There's been nothing that we've seen with this new coaching staff that shows us that that's going to be the case. You came out against Southern, and you did what you had to do. And we understand the opponent, but you did what you had to do. Against Mississippi State, you did what you had to do. Against New Mexico, a game that very easily, in my opinion, I've been through a ton of these, yeah. could have been a sleepy game. You go out there and you win 21 to nothing, whatever it might be. Yeah. You dominated that game. Okay, So this staff has shown that they can get the team ready. It's just another challenge. And you shouldn't have to get ready for Auburn. Even – with how bad that they've exactly. looked, I agree. they still I they've agree, lost. Dude. They've only lost one game. Yeah, I agree. They've lost the same amount of games as, as you have, and it's looked completely different. You're going on the road. You're going to Jordan Hare, which is going to still, I think, be loud. They want to see if Brian Harsey yeah, is going to survive. It'll, it'll be loud another sure. week. Look, they hate LSU. They're going to show up, so you shouldn't have to pump anything into this game. As soon as you walk out there for pregame, the experience, the crowd. The moment you realize where you're at, you're you're going to be at an 11. I, like I don't worry about that one bit. Yeah. So lock in, beat that ass. Let's set up next week.